What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we just finished checking out Monday Night Raw with the homie Sir Dance a Lot and Dub, man. Shout out to everyone that was part of the live stream reactions. You guys are always amazing on chat. We had a fantastic time. It was a great time, man. I already know some of y'all gonna be putting down the uh, the jokes in the in the comment section down below. If you know, you know. Uh, but we gotta talk about just the noticeable moments on Monday Night Raw. Raw was a uh, pretty pretty enjoyable you know what i'm saying it, it was much better than last week you can tell triple h kind of had things you know had the show running a little bit smoother it was a lot more wrestling which i can definitely appreciate it and it made the show go by much quicker than it usually does so i will say this week's show was way better in my opinion than last week's monday night raw talk about the most noticeable things noticeable things cody rose response Cody comes out there in his nice little all-white suit after catching the beats. He's selling the injury. Has a nice, they gave him a nice long promo segment. He's talking about, you know, his defeat to Roman Reigns, even though I wish, wish he would have mentioned how Roman had to cheat. I think that's the storyline they need to expound upon him cheating to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? So I wish they would he would have talked about that. But he addressed his attention to Brock. This is what we all wanted to know. And he's basically calling Brock out. You know what I'm saying? He's, you know, Brock has been the guy to make everyone that he faces a victim. And he himself saying, not this time, Brock. You are going to be the prey. No, you're going to be the victim. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be the victor in this situation. I'm not... I'm going to make you my victim. That's pretty much what he was saying. And I like that intensity. I guess he called him out for WrestleMania Backlash. I think Brock Lesnar is supposed to be on there next week. So we'll see what happens. But most likely that's what they're going to set it up as. Now, now we know that's what's going to happen at Backlash. I was thinking on the outcome of it, I do think, unfortunately, and I think they're, they're trying to build this, this Cody situation, his going through going through uh adversity and i like that he mentioned that in his promo because he talked about all the adversity he's been through in his entire career with the gimmicks that he's had to deal with under vince mcmahon's rule leaving for aew coming back dealing with what he's been dealing with i like that he mentioned that in his promo um i don't think he's gonna win at backlash the very brock versus cody is gonna end in a screwy finish i think it's gonna be a situation where Brock gets frustrated. He can't put Cody away legitimately, so he's going to cheat. I think that's what's going to happen here. I think you don't have Cody lose clean. I think Brock is going to win in a situation where he's going to cheat. Probably kick him in the balls, give him a low blow, and then the ref's going to see it, disqualify him, then he's going to beat him up. And then that's, that's what's going to happen. So, because they're really going with this Cody going through adversity. So, I think that's what's going to happen on their very first outing. And then they may set up a rematch with some stipulations, like a no holds barred, anything goes type thing. And I think then Cody will get the win. So, I do believe they're trying to extend this out even more to get at least one more match out of it. So, I think it's going to be a two match situation. I don't think they can extend it for three matches. I think two matches is fine. Cody... Cody will lose. Well, technically, well, yeah, Cody will lose the first one. It'll be a situation. I I, I gotta rephrase that because if he gets disqualified, then Cody technically wins the match. But I think it's gonna be a situation where the ref is not paying attention. Then he gets hit with like a low blow. Then he get hit with an F five, and then you know it'll be like Brock will have that win on paper, but we know he cheated. And then they'll set up another match at some point before SummerSlam. He'll get the job done there, and then we may get back to Roman. So that's one thing that I do think is going to happen, but it's going to be interesting to see what Brock has to say on next week's show. So we got to talk about the Usos and Solo and Kevin Owens. Um, I do like the fact it was very interesting. Uh, the Usos had a pretty good tag team match against Alpha, uh, uh, Alpha Academy. I believe that's what they call um, um, Chad Gable and Otis. Oh, and not they had a great match. I was thinking they was going with the storyline like the Usos are struggling right now because they lost at WrestleMania, so they were gonna lose this match. But they ended up winning the match, and they're they're you know trying to get in the good graces of the Tribal Chief again. So we get to the main event, 
Kevin Owens going out there by himself. Sammy and uh, Matt Riddle hadn't made it to the arena yet. So, Kevin Owens is by himself. He got attacked on SmackDown. One of the production crates was thrown up on him or whatnot on one of his legs by Solo Sokoa. So, now it's him versus Solo Sokoa. They're, you know, trying to, you know, go out. You know, go at it. You know, and it was a pretty good match. You had the Usos at ringside. Ultimately, you knew there was going to be some shenanigans, some BS, because it only makes sense. He was outnumbered three to one. That's what ended up happening. Ate a vicious Samoan spike. And Kevin Owens was selling the leg injury the entire time, as he should. And he ended up losing to uh, Solo Sokoa. Of course, they, they proceed to give out the beach, try to send them to the upper room. And that's when you see Matt Riddle and Sami Zayn run out there to make the save. And, you know, they had a little mini brawl pull apart, and that's what happened. Obviously, they're setting up the uh, six-man tag. It's going to be the Usos and Solo Sokoa versus Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Matt Riddle. That's what it looks like they're setting up. And I'm just really interested and intrigued to see where they take this storyline. Hopefully, this is my hope, hopefully they get to the point where Jimmy and Jay are not liking how Roman's treating them. Eventually, they break away from the bloodline. Now it's just Roman, Solo, and Paul. And eventually, Solo starts to realize he's not liking how Roman's treating him. Jimmy and Jay is trying to talk him, talk Solo off the ledge to get him to, you know, leave um, Roman Reigns. And ultimately, I think once Roman Reigns is by himself, that's when he'll be his most vulnerable. That's when Cody will take the championships from him. And we go from there. But other than that, decent Monday Night Raw wasn't the best, but it was way better than last week's. A lot more wrestling. I can appreciate that. It seemed like a show that was concise, had what it needed to do. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoyed it for what it was, man. So comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite part of Monday Night Raw last uh, uh, tonight. I'm filming is still uh, the night of Monday Night Raw. Let me know what was your favorite part of Monday Night Raw. And uh, let me know what storylines are you looking forward to. And are you looking forward to next week's Monday Night Raw, man? But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next week.